All right, slice versus topspin. Which is better? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive deep into the key differences between a slice and topspin dink, and we're gonna talk about our preferences, what we'd like to use, uh, so let's get into it. All right, first things first, we're going to talk about slice. So what's so good about slice? What is slice? Um, it is when you are actually coming underneath the ball and you are going to be hitting the ball in a way where you have backspin. All right, so Kaden, if you toss me that ball, thank you. Uh, when I am starting my paddle position here and I'm coming across the ball, you're going to see the ball being hit this way and the ball's gonna be traveling with a little bit of backswing, okay? So that allows the ball to stay really, really low on that side and it allows me to set up below the ball here and really just get comfortable coming across the ball. It's a very consistent shot for me and it does stay low on the other side when you hit it well. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples of the slice and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on that and then we'll get to topspin. All right, Kaden, here we go. Okay. All right, so that's a slice. A uh, couple of things to keep in mind here. Footwork is always the most important, especially when we talk about backhand dinks. So you're gonna see me utilizing that shuffle step as I come out and I try to get that ball in between my knees right in front of my hips. The other thing you will see is I start pretty level to the contact of the ball. So I'm not starting really, really high and I'm not chopping down. A lot of people think to slice the ball, you need to chop down on it. I'm actually starting right around my thigh level and I'm coming across with my shoulder. Lastly, I want you to understand that my wrist is very stable through the shot and also my elbow. I see a lot of players using their wrist, using their elbow when we need to actually just swing from the shoulder just like this. Two hand topspin dink. Uh, coming into pickleball, I was a one hand sliced kind of guy. But over time, I've changed. I love this two hand topspin dink for multiple reasons, all right? Um, but just to start it off, just like with the slice, first things first is my footwork. My preparation and my footwork start everything. If I don't have that, I don't have a shot to hit. So I have to set everything up with my feet first before I even think about what I'm doing with my paddle. Once I've set that all up, uh, whether with a shuffle or maybe just an extra step, um, I drop my paddle head nice and low, and one of the biggest things that can throw a lot of people off with the two-hander is that it is mostly going to be left-hand dominant, so opposite-hand dominant, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed. For me, I'm right-handed in pickleball, so it is going to be a little bit more of my left hand doing more of the work, all right? Once I've dropped my paddle head, my left hand is going to be a is going to be doing a lot of the swinging. My right arm will kind of just be following with it. Um, so it is kind of like a lefty forehand and I'm just brushing up on this ball to create that upward motion on that ball to now have it dip back down once it crosses over the net. So set up paddle path going upward, right? And from there, it should kind of finish right at my right ear, um, kind of like I'm getting ready to pick up a phone call and it should be a nice, quick swing that shouldn't have a whole lot of pace, but should be more about the placement of the shot. So I'm gonna show a couple examples of it, and then uh, Jordan and I are gonna talk about which one we like more and the benefits of both. Oh yeah, baby. Those were really good backhand rolls there. And if you would actually like to know the strategy of exactly where to place your aggressive dinks like this, then make sure you check out the link in our free masterclass in the description below or go to attackmasterclass.com. All right, so we just talked about some of the differences between slice and topspin. And for both of us, Kaden, we actually use both. 
Yep. Okay, so there's different situations where we might want to use slice, different situations where we might want to use topspin based on the ball coming in. That's a big indicator for me. Uh, Kanan could speak for himself, but when I am receiving balls that are really, really fast and quick at my feet, and I don't really have a lot of time to set up, I think for me, Kanan, it's a little bit easier to hit slice. What are your thoughts on that? I would 100% agree. Okay. All right. Um, when do you choose to hit topspin? Um, I would use topspin typically in a setting where I'm offensive, I'm in good positioning. Um, you know, I find that, you know, maybe my opponents are a little bit more in the middle of the court and I can now open up the court a little bit. So, um, it's it's definitely more of an offensive shot, which means yeah. you know I have to be committed to be being offensive when I'm hitting that shot. Whereas with the slice, I can be offensive sometimes, but I can also use it as a defensive shot. So I really wouldn't use the two hander as like a oh no I'm in trouble shot. That's that's a great great point. Yeah. So again, um, a lot of times also when I'm receiving slice. The, if the ball is really, really low and stays low, it's actually easy or easier, we can say, to counter it back with slice because my paddle face is already open. Right. Uh, when the ball sits up a little bit or maybe it's shorter in the kitchen, more of a dead dink, those are the balls that I look to, to roll and be really offensive with. Yeah, I think it's also important to note that, you know, with the one hand, um, you know, it's it's a little bit harder to be aggressive off the bounce with a slice um, but it does allow you to disguise a, a, a lob um, so when you're one hand slice dinking you can use kind of that time to either lob a ball up or even flick an attack or roll an attack um, whereas the two-hander you're going to be able to you know use the lob still but it's a little bit harder um, as long as you know of course that contact point is still good you could still lob and then you can also create off the bounce for speed ups but it's hard to kind of roll that ball in the air so there's give and take on both shots for sure yeah all right so you just got our thoughts on the top spin versus slice again we use both of these shots uh, depending on the situation but we're going to have a little battle here we're going to start with um, actually me hitting only topspin and then Caden only hitting slice we're going to see how that goes and then we're going to reverse rolls and then we're going to do one where we use both okay so i'm only topspin here here we go Caden. all right you're topspin on slice yep here, here we, we go, go. Oh, ho, ho. bang, baby. All right, a little lucky. A little lucky there. All right, so Caden, let's go. Uh, you you uh, toss me, and I'm going to go slice. Yeah? All right, here we go. <laughs> oh. Hi. ATP, baby. All right, so obviously small sample size there. We both switched roles there, but you can hopefully see the aggressiveness of the balls and kind of the differences between topspin and slice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a mix. So we're going to go cross court. And again, if we have to reset middle, we'll do that, right? If the ball's way outside our hips. But now we're going to be really strategic on whether we use slice or whether we use topspin. And then we'll try, we'll do a recap and maybe we will reset and we'll kind of talk about why we made those decisions. Like it. Okay, so we'll do three rallies. All right, first of three, Cannon. Okay, here we go. Here we go.
No! Oh, ho, ho. Woo! All right, it. just in that, Caden, um, I really see myself, you talk, for, you speak for yourself, but when I see that dead dink, I, my inclination is to roll. Absolutely. I yeah. want to roll it, especially if I can really get that ball in front of me. Yep. Now, when, I think there was one or two times we could go back in that, but when you hit me slice, yep. like you set up, my, my, I could kind of see that, so I kind of set up for my slice too. Yeah. Just in case it is a little low. I don't know. Any, anything you notice on that rally there? Yeah, I uh, definitely find myself rolling a little bit more when, when I find something a little bit floatier. Yeah. Um, and when you hit slice, you hit such good slice that that ball stays so low that it almost forces me to kind of use slice back um, just because the top spin can be a little bit harder from a lower spot. Um, yeah. But I mean, as you guys could tell, I was still trying to mix it in. Um, even when you were hitting good slice, I was still trying to get underneath that ball and, and hit slice or hit top spin. And uh, it, it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder to hit that ball uh, from slice that's so low to now hit top spin. So like, like you said, uh, slice, when slice is coming, it's sometimes easier to, to use the slice back. Okay, so first of three, here we go, folks. Yeah, I, wow. Oh, ho, ho. Two O's, Kaden gonna come back. He's gotta lock in now. He's gotta lock, oh, oh yep. That, that was, was a good roll. That was easy. That was a good roll, two one, <laughs> two one. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, Too much slice. On. Two, two. Two all. Got ourselves a ball game. Went by one or two? One. 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 Two all. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no baby, come way. back. No way.